all the pressure fell off and we knew, okay, we're just gonna have an extremely small wedding, but it's gonna be all right, you know? We're just gonna get married and it's fine. This is just our wedding, this is just our story now. Hi, I'm Robert. Hi, I'm Annie. And because of the coronavirus, we had to change our wedding plans and live stream our ceremony. First year, we both were in the same church. I was there before and then Annie came and joined the church. Um, we basically didn't have any contact. I was getting interested in, to, in her and um, so I just made some effort to get into conversations and to get to know her a bit. And that's where we basically met and started talking to each other. At some point I asked for her number and then we basically went on on our first date and he asked for my number he didn't just find it out found it out somehow I, I like that anyone who has had the privilege of knowing Annie and Robert knows that they are a total power couple have so much energy and vision they are full of life they are always ready to encourage others and they just invest in their community so much and the people around them. My plan for the engagement was we went to an area a bit more north in Germany where you have lots of lakes and I just didn't plan which lake we're gonna go to. <laughs> I just like, there's lots of lakes, we're just gonna go to a nice lake, find a good spot. Kind of guess now, you know, something would happen because there was a spot, one spot to the water and I was like, hey, let's take this one. And then he was like, no, it's too close to the to the walk, to the road. And I was like, how special do you want to have this spot? <laughs> like we ended up in the jungle basically and went on my knee. It was such a moment full of joy and... Very sweaty engagement, <laughs> <laughs> but very beautiful too. <laughs> Robert, I remember he called me and we prepared a surprise party for them with some friends together. We cheered with all our friends and family that you did really well with the, I mean everything, but especially with the, <laughs> with the surprise party. Because we love that, you know, to have our friends around. Basically for our wedding planning, for us it was 250 people. We were looking actually for a church building, which actually took us quite a while to find that church. But then we found it. I made this mood board of how you can decorate it and lots of fairy lights and an installation at the altar and flowers and all of that, right? Annie really had a vision. One of the last things we booked actually was the um, honeymoon. We thought that's once in a lifetime <laughs> and so we just uh, booked it <laughs> and <That> happened. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks before I think it was that they said that you can't meet more than um, a thousand people here in Berlin we wouldn't be a thousand people so we still kind of felt safe the moment where it really um, where it really would impact our wedding and there was actually my a bachelor party and that's where where I got the news that um, the government released the re regulation that uh, meetings more than 50 people are not allowed so they took it down from a thousand straight to a 50 people so Ani was in our apartment with my mom and I come back home with my dad and my brother who were at the bachelor party with me and we came back and we're like do you know the news? We already cried it all out and now we're we're good with it. <laughs> we, yeah. we already cried out all the tears, so now we're good. Everything she touches is beautiful. Um, so it was heartbreaking, even just as a friend, to imagine having to replan your day. This time is not about being fearful anymore right now, but it's actually about taking responsibility. We are definitely believing that this was um, God coming into the situation and yeah. just saying, hey, this is okay, I'm with you. Yeah. And this is the right decision to do. We still were excited for them because we were cheering them on and we made plans how to make it happen. We actually made the decision to only have mom and dad and our siblings there. And we did it in the church office. We did the ceremony there. Super small and super amazing. We got to set up some of the flowers that I bought. <laughs> Nobody was surprised when this crisis hit and nothing was going to stop them from getting married. A good friend of us um, is just like, hey guys, and you know what you can do? We have this film studio here in our church office to film the online church services. We can use it to live stream. To live stream a wedding. Live stream wedding. Of course, you know, one moment that I was like, Oh my gosh, this is not gonna happen how I wanted it to come down the aisle, right? I first thought it wouldn't happen and I would just walk in and be like, hi, you know, live stream, hey, we're gonna <laughs> say our, our wedding vows. And then last minute, we actually decided, okay, my dad is gonna bring me into this live stream and hand me over to Robert.
in the end of the day, it was it was different, very different, but it was very beautiful. You could feel the love and support just being poured in from a distance, on the comments, through social media. It was just so beautiful, and and they were so happy, which is. And at the end of the day, all that matters. They had a microphone over the heads of my family coming down. And I was like, that is so funny. You know, I never, I mean, that just is not the view that I expected as a bride from the altar, right? If you look into the audience. In the end, actually what I would say, the silver lining is that even more people got to watch, even more people got to be live there and, and see us. And that was what the most important thing for us was with this wedding, that we do our vows before our friends and family, before God. We got so many messages from all around the world, literally, that say, oh, I was there with you and it felt so amazing. <laughs> and that just made me so happy, you know, because that was what I didn't want to miss. And that was what made me so sad at the beginning when we said we were we're not gonna have it and then still we had it you know in such a different way than I could have ever planned it before one very uh, practical silver lining is that the wedding uh, <laughs> was way cheaper than expected we wouldn't have this couch we both cannot really grasp that this is real life right now because it's all all has changed we end up in this new flat that we've never been in before living together not seeing anyone else than us you know it just feels a little bit like a dream i asked Annie on her walk i was like so what are you and like what are you and robert doing together for like date nights in quarantine she's like i'm going crazy the other night i literally made him stare into my eyes for five minutes <laughs> We were dying laughing. If I would have to nail it down to one takeaway lesson from all of this, I would say that it's all gonna be okay. Whatever you plan in the end, you know, it's gonna be okay. My grandma sent us a, 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 a message, I think one or two days before, and she's like, hey, this as a little encouragement, Here's a photo from our wedding. I think we were like 12 people. At the end of the day, it was just, everything it was supposed to be. It was a celebration of their commitment to each other. They came in with such a joyful heart. So I was really impressed, um, yeah, how peaceful and how joyful they were. The thing is, this is the time we live in right now. To write a story, your own story, um, in this season and make it actually a story of love. Afterwards, it's a great story to tell. I mean, you know, like what, when you tell your children or your grandchildren, when we got married, there was this crazy virus and we had to do it in the smallest circle and we did it with, with a live stream. I think it's going to be a great story, so yeah. I can definitely encourage people to do it.